Peace and blessings. This is Black Light Cyberspace Ministry. <clears throat> I don't know if I showed y'all. This is one of my cards uh, from the early days. I had a uh, janitorial company and a uh, landscaping company. <clears throat> you know, something easy to start. And uh, what else we got here? Oh, here we go. We got uh, this is our uh, when I was uh, selling fish from door to door. I was selling fish and hot meals. I had a grill. My cousin drew that design. Faith and Family was the name of my handle. And uh, we sold, uh, had a grill. My, my cousin had a lot that he used to make pallets, build pallets on, sell them to the you know, the auto factories and different factories around the city. And I put my uh, barbecue grill on there and made some money, man. And I made enough money to go uh, see my relatives down south. And they had farmland, you know. And the old ones was dying off. They couldn't upkeep the land no more. And so the young ones, they didn't want to do that. They wanted to go to corporate America. They didn't want to work that farm. So we had a whole uh, village of relatives that had one town showed up with nothing but, but my, my relatives, but they all had farms. And the young ones didn't want to work it no more. And I imagine, you know, they are dead by now because that was back in the early 80s and so they didn't want to work that farm no more and so the Caucasian took it over I know on my grandfather's farm on my father's side I haven't talked about his people too much he was from an area around uh Little Rock, I think 50 miles uh, outside of Little Rock, called Salahati, Arkansas. And in that town was nothing but my relatives. And they were old and dying off, and the young ones got involved in selling dope. Some of them wanted to just go to corporate America, you know. Now my mother's from St. Louis, Missouri, from Crown Lake. And uh, Red Fox. And she knew uh, uh, Lou Gossett. Uh, at least her sister did. Dated uh, my cousin. You know, and uh, Clark Terry, and uh, I told y'all Clark Terry was uh, my uncle. I consider him my uncle. He was, actually, he was my uncle Johnny Davis, uh, Marguerite Davis, was Clark Terry's sister. And Johnny Davis was my mother's brother. And he married Marguerite. And Clark Terry used to come to town when he's doing a gig, you know, and hang out with his sister and my mother. And, and I already told you that my uncle and Malcolm X, they were running buddies, you know. 
And I got an insight on uh, how Malcolm got killed. Because he talked to my uncle the night before. He took him out. But uh, that's old news now. Uh, I would say this, though. Uh, they would get any brother out of prison to put a hit on somebody. Remember Belly? DMX? Belly, they got him out of jail. Put hit on hit on what they call the minister. But at the end, Belly, uh, he couldn't do it, you know. But uh, unfortunately for Brother Malcolm, they did it. See, little brothers like me, you know, I'm not famous or hard hitting. But I done put my work in, you know. Uh, now I'm relaxing, you know. I, I, I'm retired, but I still hustle, you know. I do. I do a little. I hit. A, I hit a lick every now and then, you know. And I still compose music, you know. And. I'm trying to stay around here for at least uh, another 100, 100 years, you know. But I figure I'm going to have to get my eating habits in order because I got a feeling that uh, we're going to take this, we going to take this bad boy over, man. I just know it. I know we at the end of Revelations. The mark of the beast has already been put on us. So we passed that part. Uh, the world has really ended. It's just the after effects of it. And gradually we creeping up in there. But uh, we just need a guiding light. And black light is here. And I know you young brothers ain't gonna try to listen to your older brother. You know. But see, when I was coming up, uh, I talked to my uncles and about when it was when they was young and my grandmama. I was, a t I was inquisitive like that. I wanted to feel what they went through coming up in this joint. So I got their head, some more brothers' heads, and I know what the Caucasian is about. So one day, about not too long ago, maybe about seven, eight months ago, uh, me and my wife was and my grandson was getting ready to have dinner. She was frying up some chicken. And uh, heard a knock at the door. There was some salesmen. I ain't going to go into every little detail. In, in this part, I'm going to come back and go into detail. They were selling uh, some vacuum cleaners. So I let them in. It was... One black brother and the rest of them, one of them looked like a Chaldean. And he was the ringleader. He's about 6'2". And uh, so they uh, uh, wanted me to buy this vacuum cleaning cost about three $300, man. And since, since I do that little janitorial thing every now and then, at first, I was going to buy it, but then I, when I seen how it was made, I couldn't use it. So I even gave them uh, some references, you know. But they didn't want to leave. It was three of them. 
and they didn't want to leave my my house and they kept on asking me how much money I got and I told them several times that I didn't want to buy their product then I asked them to leave and they didn't want to leave and I, I said it real polite I said look uh, me and my wife uh, you disturbing our, you know you interrupting our dinner we getting ready to have dinner and so they started talking to her, trying to convince her. And so while they were talking to her, I went upstairs and got my gas. I had a I had a I had a nice little artillery. I had a a gauge, a couple of scope rifles, and uh uh Almost, it was something like an AK-47, and I had two uh, pistols. I had a 38 snub nose and a and a, a long gun, a, a handgun. So uh, I went, sister, I went put this 30 snub nose in my pocket, my sweater. I had on a sweater, and it had deep pockets, so I put this. Snub nose in there and went downstairs while he was talking to my wife. And she got frustrated with him. And she left it up to me to protect the house, you know. So I did that. I said, get the fuck out my house. And you know the guy didn't want to leave. And he got angry when I said that, so I, that's when I knew, man, something was wrong. I'm going to tell somebody like that to get out of my house, and then they're going to get mad at me. They was trying to sell me, or either they was trying to rob me, what I was thinking. So I kept the gun in my pocket, and I cocked it in my pocket. I wasn't going to show it. I was going to shoot them through my, uh, my pocket. So... He still wouldn't leave. He heard it cock, but he still wouldn't leave. So then I pulled it out, but I held it down like this. He still wouldn't leave. <laughs> and I told the guy, I say, I'm about to put a hurting on you, man. So the guy got mad, and all three of them left out, but they still didn't leave out right away. The, the guy that refused to leave left out, and while he left out, he was calling the police. And about 10 minutes later, the police came. They knocked on the door. I'm going to finish this on another day. Let's wind it down. This is to be continued. I hope you young brothers listen to what I'm about to say about this system, what happened to me and everything. So this is Black Light Out. Be back on the other side of Black.